So we're going to learn Daf Mem, and we're going to start with the last line on Daf Lamed Tes Amid Beis. And the Gemara had established that when the Nazir terminates his Nazirus, and he does what's called Teglachas HaChrona Shal Nazir, at the end of his Nazirus he shaves his head, all the hair of his head, so that's done with a ta'ar. And the Gemara derives this from psukim. Right, there are many different ways of removing hair, but in the case of a nazi, we're going to derive from a mitzora that just like a mitzora requires ta'ar, so too a nazi requires ta'ar. So we're going to translate tar as a um, a razor. Now we don't know how the Gemara assumes that Tiglachas of Mitzora has to be with tar. The apostle doesn't say it. In Vayikra Yudalit, it says Vayo Vayomashvi Yigalechas Kol Saro. It doesn't say tar. So the Gemara wants to know why, questioning why we have this drasha on the previous uh, Amud here, on Daf Lamentes Amud Beis, Talmud Lomer Tar Lo Yavala Rosho. Forget about that. Why don't we just learn it from Mitzora? And the Gemara answers EF show. We cannot derive it from an analogy to Mitzora. Now we start Daf Mem. Ain donim kal mi chamur lahachmir olaf. We're not going to derive a din that's kal from a din that's chamur to be machmir on the din that's kal. So if we find a case where the Torah is machmir on the details of a din chamur, we're not going to derive from that that we have to equally be machmir in the case of a din kal. So now we have to figure out what's the din chamur and what's the din kal. Mitzora is a din chamur. Nazir is relative to Mitzora a din kal. And therefore, if the Torah was machmir in the case of Mitzorah to require a tar, that does not prove anything about a nazir, which is a din kal. And this is the Tanakama. We'll see Rebbe in a minute. But as far as the Tanakama is concerned, maybe the Torah was machmir in Mitzorah to require tar. Because Mitzor is called a Din Chamu. We cannot derive Nazir from Mitzor to require Giluach Betar because Nazir is relatively a Din Kal. Now I'm trying to figure out exactly how the Gemara knows that Nazir is a Din Kal. It's probably a very simple answer to this question, but I don't know the answer. You you have a footnote over there, maybe it tells you why Nazir is Kal? No, I don't have the um I don't have the article for those. Oh. Um. He says he lilmod mi mitzora shegam nazir chayav legalech betar ki a mitzora chomur mi nazir. Okay, but what? So here in the note he quotes a pasuk of Ayikri Yudal. It says vayob ayom ashvii yigalech es kol saaro es roshov es kano es kabosena es kol sar. 
Saro Yigale. So it means it's not just Giluach of the head to remove the hair from the head, but every last hair on his body has to be removed. Kol Sarosa. And the Torah goes out of its way to enumerate as Kol Sa'aro, as Rosho, as Kano, as Gabos Enov, Kol Saro, including even his eyebrows. So that's the big chumra of Mitzorah vis-a-vis Nazir. Nazir is only chayv to m'galeach es rosho, as the Pesach says in Nazir, it says, v'gilach ha Nazir es rosh nizro. Rebbe Omer ain't it tzorach. I don't need that Russia of Tar, which is brought down here on Lamed Tesamid Beis, Tar Lo Yavar Al Rosho, to derive that the last Tiglachas is with the Tar. Sharehu Omer, Tar Lo Yavar Al Rosho Ad Molos Hayomim Asher Yazir. So the Isa Tiglachas. Is formulated in this language, the Torah Omra Achar Melos. Achar Melos Lotehei Tiglachas Elavita. So when it says in the Posuk Ad Melos, we read it Ad Melos Lo Yigalech Bita. During the fulfillment of his Nazirus, Lo Yigalech Betar. But after he fulfills his Nazirus, he Galech Betar. And he reads it not only as a license, but also as an obligation. Okay, now the Gemara is going to ask a kasha. Let's see if we can figure out the Gemara's kasha. The word tar, according to Rebbe in the Pesach Tar Lo Yavol Rosho, is telling me that Achar Amalos Lo Teik Tiglachas El Betar. So the Gemara asks, Vaksiv Tar Lo Yavol Rosho. So what's the Gemara is asking now? Gemara's kasha is that the Brisa back on Daf Lamed Tesam and Beis says that all different types of giluach are prohibited, not just tar. So he's reading it that when it says tar lo yavral rosho, we need the word tar here to tell me that there's an iser giluach betar. But yet the Brisa says that every type of giluach is prohibited. So how can you interpret tar lo yavral rosho as if it means only tar? So the more answer is that from the language lo yavar al rosho, we derive that any type of removal of the hair is prohibited. So what does the Torah mean when it says tar lo yavar al rosho? Lavar ola b'shnei lav. That if the, the nazir does his giluach with a tar, then he violates two lavan. One is tarvalo yavar. But 
Wait, how do we see two lavim here? Let's just figure this out. One lav is from the words lo yava. And those include any type of uh, gilua, any method of taking off the hair. But there's another lav that's derived from the words ta'ar lo. So now we're going to use the word lo and we're going to dash in it both liel and lara, both lefonel and liachrel. And he's going to violate there for two different lava. One is lav, lo yavar in any form of removing the hair. And another love is for tar, tar lo. And now we get to Rav Chizna. So Rav Chizna now is going to talk about the Shi'urim regarding the Isurim and the mitzvahs of Giluach Saro in the case of Enosim. So first of all, we have the Isu Giluach Saro during his Nazirus. We have the mitzvah of Teglachas at the end of his Nazirus. And then we have a case of Stiras and Nazirus if he went ahead and he was megaleach against the law during the Yemei Niziruso, so there's a halacha called stiras hanizirus. So let's go through these three halachas. The first one is iser giluach sa'aro. Omer av chiza lilkos to engender a chiv malchus during his nizirus. Die, it's enough, be'achas. Even if he only takes off one single hair, he has violated the Iser Gilua. We akev bishtain. So it means even if he did a Gilua, but he left two sorrows, he has not fulfilled his mitzvah of Tiglachas. So he can violate the lav of Tiglachas by cutting off one single hair and he'll get Malchus for that. But as far as the mitzvah of Tiglachas, it's Bishtayim. Meaning, if he leaves two hairs, then he has not fulfilled his mitzvah of Giluach HaRosh. Now we get to the third halacha, which is called listar. That if he does giluach, he's soser. Ain't no soser ella be rov rosho ubitar. So again, even though he violates the law with one hair, and even though he could fulfill his mitzvah of giluach, even though he left a hair on his head. But as far as Listar is concerned, he needs Rov Rosh. And he needs a tire. So without a tire, he doesn't get Malchus, and he's not so soon as Zeus. And when he finishes the Zeus, he needs Giluach Betar. So the Gemara raises the following objection to Rav Chizda. How can you tell me that Betar in?
Vaktani, Minai, the rabbi says, call him Avirin, no matter what he uses to remove his hair. And we're going to dash in this from the apostle. That even if he's Megalech without a tar, he violates the Easter, that's called the Rabbos. As Kolam Avirin. So he doesn't need a tar to violate the love. He'll need a tire to be so serious as the zeros, but not to violate the love. Ella Amo ke ain't tire. So, what does ke ain't tire mean? Oh, he says, "Kein puula satar da'inu shokeres es haseyar umashchisa be misharshan." He pulls the hair out of its root. That's what a razor is able to do. Okay, so this this is uh, I think where we'll stop, Ira. Just to get a, a little sort of taste of what's going on here. Okay. And uh, I'll wish you a great week. And uh, Mirza Hashem, we should be Zoha to finish this daf, you know, with all the yeah, yeah, yeah. the details of the Easter Terror and the, the Easter uh -huh. Giluach and the Giluach that is Chayv at the end of his Naziris, all the different minutia. Okay, then? Okay, Shkaya. Okay, Shkaya. Uh, thank you so much. Have okay. a great week. You too.